that if you've been following the conversation of me reaching out to him, now you know it's been a long while uh, in the making. So we eventually we have him, and he's the legendary Chandu. He's, he's someone that for me, since I started my Excel journey, uh, he, he and Billy Jelen are the only two people that I've always seen in that, you know, as people I'm looking up to and I keep following and Luckily, I, I, I also got into the MVP program and it was like, ah, I'm eventually becoming like them. <laughs> and so we are very, very uh, fortunate to have him. He's joining us all the way from New Zealand. And guess what? It's 4 a.m. is time. So it's a big sacrifice has been is made for us today. I don't want to take too much time uh, to so that he will have all the time he needs to share with us, but I'll put his links in the chat box so you can also uh if you are new to him you should sign up to his to his he started as a blog but it's a lot more than a blog it's a community it's a forum it's a hall uh so if you are late to the game of following him i'll keep you updated i'm going to post all his uh, resources uh that is made available freely for you to connect and sign up so chandu uh, over to you sir and uh i'll turn off my mic <laughs> and turn off my video so you can take off take up the stage. Thank you so much, Michael. And um, it is such a pleasure and honor to speak to the user group that you are running and, and thriving all the way across in the other part of the world. Uh, and um, I know it hasn't been easy for us to schedule this because there are a few things that came in the way, but I'm, I'm really glad we are doing it. And uh, just for the record, I enjoy waking up early. So 4 a.m. Um, is not a big deal. What I'm more excited about is uh, is showcasing some of the interesting things that Excel has been adding to Microsoft has been adding to Excel to make our life simple. So the topic that I want to talk today is called um, <coughs> data types and specifically Power Query data types. So this is a feature that has been added in the last few months. And using this feature, you can um, simplify some of the data management, data handling tasks, uh, and, and even theoretically reduce the number of lookups that you write. So I won't tease you much. I'll get into Excel and then we will talk about that. If you have any questions uh, during the session, feel free to post them in the chat window or uh, you know, convey them to Michael and then I will check into that every few minutes or every 10 minutes or so uh, to see you and, and then help you out in that. So let me start by sharing my screen. All right, so here we have um, some made up data. It doesn't really matter what data you're using, so you can uh, technically use any of your data as long as this particular feature is available. But what I have for you is some very, very simple employee data. So I got some names, some gender information, department, age, date on which that employee started in our organization, how much salary they, they get and what is their um rank or say you no know, performance rating and it kind of goes on for some 100 rows and we have that in a nice little table the table is named staff now normally if i have data like this and i want to know certain information about anybody so let's say i want to know what is the salary of brian bose or kelsey walked in we could kind of look it up like that, but if I if I want to do it in a more structured manner, then we can use a formula. So for example, I can go to another sheet. Right, right. And paste uh, some name like this, and let's say this is the name, and I want to know what is their salary we can use a formula like VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP. We can say this name in the staff table, name column, and then get the staff table salary column. So this is how 
we normally approach this, right? But uh, with the introduction of data model, uh, sorry, with the introduction of data type feature, we have uh, opportunities to tackle these kind of things in a better, uh, significantly interesting way. So I'll show you what that is first. So here I got my data, and if I go to the data ribbon, I can send this data to Power Pivot. So you can use the, sorry, Power Query. You can use this from sheet button. Uh, it would be called either table range or from sheet, depending on which version of Excel you're using, and push this data to Power Query, and there you can convert this into a data type. Now at this point, some of you even might be thinking, what is data type like you know we have, we have maybe heard about it seen it like what is really data type so let's just do a quick demo of the data types itself data type is where uh, microsoft introduced this concept so that you can put in some data and then you can say this is of this data type normally excel supports theoretically just two data types. You have numbers, you have text values. That's pretty much it. There's some other values like, um, you know, error values, Boolean values and dates and times and other types of things, but they're all technically either number or text. That's a, that is how Microsoft Excel used to view data. So if you have a number like 12, that is a number. Uh, you have some text like two, that is a text value. That is pretty much what Excel is capable of dealing with. But few, almost two years ago now, they have introduced this data types feature. So you might see this already in the data ribbon that there are some buttons. Depends on which version of Excel you're running, there will be fewer or more buttons. Uh, but you got your stocks, currencies, geography, uh, and a few other things that they are adding, and this is constantly evolving. So let's just play with the geography, right? So I'll put some country names. Uh, Nigeria, New Zealand, India, Japan. Now, as you try to do this, Excel will already guess that, oh, you're trying to type some countries. Do you want to treat these as country region rather than text value? So if you don't treat them like country or region, they'll be just the text value of Nigeria, text value of Japan. But the moment you say convert, this is when Excel will um, connect to internet, fetch some relevant information about these countries and treat them as a geography. So now there is really no change to the value, but Excel now starts to think about this as the country of Nigeria rather than the text of Nigeria. Same for New Zealand. So because it is a data type, and there is some additional information associated with it. When you select, you will see that there is actually a little icon that pops up. Uh, likewise, there is an extra um, icon in the beginning indicating that this is some special. So if I click on that, I can see uh, that for Nigeria, I can get all of this information. Right? There's a lot of information here, so I'm going to show you one of these. Let's just uh, get the capital city so it will give me that right i can do the same for new zealand either again i can kind of do it like this or i can just drag this down and i'll get the the capital cities for these other countries right so this is what a data type is now the best part here is you notice that nigeria the capital abuja has come up and i can because that itself is another geographical region. This is this time it is actually a city. Excel has already tagged that as a city. So now I can go and get more information about these cities. So for example, I could uh, hypothetically ask what is the population of New Delhi and, and, and then do the same for these other cities. But let's stop there. Let's just examine what is going on. I got my capital city and let's see what is happening here. In this cell, the value is really B5 dot within square brackets capital city. So this is what the data types feature introduces. It adds this additional feature wherein you can use the dot operator and then get the extra elements of your data directly without, uh, you know, writing any other formula. So you're simply saying whatever is the data type in B5 
I want the capital city for that data type and it will get to get you that right? So once you have that because B5 is a relative reference and you drag it down, it becomes like B7, B8, capital city, right? This is something that is already in Excel uh, for a while now. So if you have not tried that, this itself is very useful. So give it a try. Let me see what is happening in the chat uh, to make sure that. Uh, OK, so that is um, my. Introduction to the data type concept. You could use data types for geographies. You can use them for currency. You can use them for. Um, uh, stocks, whatever you want, you can use um, the data types. There are some <coughs> fixed data types that are defined and we can use them. You can. The new feature that I was I'm going to introduce now is. Well, explain now is the data types wherein. We want to treat these employees as employee data types. So when I say chess bonnell, I'm not meaning the text of chess bonnell. I want the employee of chess bonnell to be treated and then I want to say chess bonnell dot gender. Then I want to get mail or dot department and then get the department of website or date of join and whatever. So that is the feature that Microsoft added. To do this, all you have to do is send this data to Power Query. So you can bring the data directly from the Excel spreadsheet or elsewhere. Uh, probably you already know about Power Query. Um, maybe in some other meetup or elsewhere you have heard about this. So we click on that and push this data to Power Query. Now from here, <coughs> if you go to the transform ribbon, there is a little button all the way to the right hand side called create data type. It is part of the structured column features and using this we can now create data types. So to create all you have to do is just select everything. And then click on create data type. OK, this will open up a box wherein you power query will ask. So what is it that you want to do? You want to have the data type associated with the name of the employee. So we'll say a name. Now keep in mind that whatever column you select here that needs to be unique. So if you don't have a unique column, you need to either define a unique identifier like employee ID or something and then use that. And then once you set this up, click OK. And at this point, Power Query will take all of your data and shrink it into that single column. So now the employee itself is containing all the information. You don't need to have these individual columns because the employee record contains everything. And at this point our data type has been created. Now I can go and close and load and send this data back to Excel. OK, so the data now comes back to Excel and you can see that already each employee has got this little um, box logo next to them indicating that this is special. It's not just the text of Barfani. It is actually the data type. So I got my data type here and I can now go and for example, let's say I want to see the salary of these people. I'll say salary. And I didn't even have to type this. This is pretty smart because as soon as I said salary, Power Query will went ahead. Sorry, Excel went ahead and created that column. But uh, you know, maybe we'll just change it to something like REM or whatever. And then we can say this data type dot and as soon as you press dot, you will see all the available options. So I can now pick salary in the and the see the salaries for everybody. So this is um, one powerful way in which we are avoiding the lookup concept altogether. OK, um, let me just check if there is any. Uh, so I've also been checking too. Uh, people are yes. really <laughs> by this functionality. So I guess some people are trying to figure out which version of Excel has it. Uh, yeah. Then also I forgot to mention. So there are two of us supervising. The, I mean, coordinating this training. So he, my second colleague, Ifai, 
he's going to take over towards the end. He's the one who will end the session and and all. So in case in case you hear from him, you won't be like, where did my cat go to? So yeah. yeah. So the question is more about what versions of Excel have this functionality. Yeah. So this is available in Excel 365, and yeah. So we. Within 365, there are probably multiple versions. So, um, but because 365 is like an ongoing version of Excel, you you will have whatever I'm showing. You will all have that. If not today, you will have it tomorrow, next month, or the month after. That's pretty much it. So, uh, it, it is relevant for 365 Excel. And uh, some of the data type feature itself, like these things. They might be even available in 2016 Excel, but I suppose most people are now on to 365 version of Excel, so you should you should be either seeing them now or you will see them in future as and when they become more more widely available. So I'll I'll tell you a little bit uh, on on the specific versioning of Excel because this is one of the big confusing aspects wherever you teach anything or you demonstrate or you make a video um, because like in this case I'm showing you something people will see this and then they say oh wait a sec my Excel doesn't look like this what's going on uh, it's simply because even though everything is called Excel 365 there are different levels at which this operates so if you go to your file and click on account you can do this from Excel or Outlook or PowerPoint or whatever. <clears throat> you can see what is the version of your product. So you can see that this is usually it would say 365, but it could also say 2016, 2019, 2013, whatever. And and then it will also give some additional version information. So this this one is called version 2105. Uh, Microsoft is, I think, releasing like every week or every fortnight or every month or whatever. So your number will be either 2105 or it's a few numbers behind or whatever. But if so, newer version will reach your computer. And then how soon these new versions come to you depend on what program you're on. That's the middle button. So most companies, most individuals will not be on the insider program. They will be on the uh, regular channel, which means the updates are only released once every either six months or once every month. Whereas I am on to a, a special channel called Insider. This is again, you don't have to pay anything extra. You can kind of jump into the Insider channel anytime, which means uh, you will get more updates, like more frequent updates. So I get updates every two weeks, every fortnight I, I'll I'll get a message saying you got a new version of office do you want to update and I just update it um, because I, I I'm on this version mainly because I am in the space of teaching people talking about technology so I need to know what is happening right so that's why I kind of put in my put myself into this version whereas the um, people who are working with customers or business you don't need to really kind of stay at the very edge of the versions uh, because there is also a problem of sometimes there is a big problem or a bug in the version and nobody has tested it. They released it and then it went outside and then you will see the problem. So that is why um, it's not necessary that you have to be on that, but whatever I'm showing it will appear in Excel 365. If not today, two months, three months down the line. OK, back to our data type feature. Now I can see from what Michael mentioned and even just scanning one or two chat messages, it is very exciting in itself and that is really good, right? You know, you are seeing something powerful like this and you can get every other related bits into like shrink everything into one column. So you're not really having 75 columns. You just have everything there, but that itself contains all the other bits. Now let us see how a lookup on this will work. So um, we will do it here because that way you can see everything in one screen. And uh, let's put a name. Let's chat Jan Morforth. Okay, 
So this is the name that I want to look up. And what we want is we want to show their gender, salary, and let's just start with that. OK, so we can say, for example, I want to figure out what is the gender of that person. So we can use a formula like XLOOKUP. And you can use XLOOKUP, VLOOKUP, whatever you want. Um, and you can just say look up this. And then look it up in the data type column, right? So it just looks it up in the data type. Now what do we return? OK, because we are just looking up on the name column, but I want to return the gender. So this table is called staff underscore two. Uh, and then data type. So I want to return the same data type column, but instead of just getting the column, I want to get the gender of that person, so dot gender. So this is how you can use it to get specific items out of your data like that. OK, now when you do it like this, you will obviously get an error. You are not going to get the result even if the name matches. OK, Jan Morforth is here. You can see that that person is there, but this is not matching. That is because this is the name, the text value, whereas this is Jan Morforth as a data type. So this and that are not technically equal. OK, so the lookup should happen on the actual title of the column rather than the entire column itself. So here instead of saying data type, we will say dot title. Title is is a special variable that gets added to the data type which refers to the actual text value itself. So now I'll get Jan's gender and we could do another lookup for salary as well. But when you go back and look at the title of this meetup invite, it says avoid writing lookups, whereas we are writing lookups. So you might be thinking, what are we talking about? We are writing lookups. Why are we? Where is the avoiding part? So let me show that to you. OK, I'll just move this down and then first we will fetch the record itself. OK, so this is where I will say X lookup. That person. And then we will say staff underscore two dot title. And then I want the whole thing here. So we do write this lookup like this. We are saying get this value, look it up in the title and then get the entire data type column itself. So we'll get the Jan Morforth as, as a record because it's a record. I'll get this little squiggly thing in the beginning, the box mage indicating that this is not a simple text value. It is actually all the information about Jan Morforth is in the cell G5. OK, let's put uh, this color here G5. Now G5 has everything that I want. If I want gender, all I have to do is this say equal to dot gender. If I want salary, I'll say dot salary. So we get everything without writing these other lookups because the first lookup itself getting gets everything that we need and these other things can be just. Whatever we want. And because it is all linked to that cell, I can change this. I can, for example, go and say um, King Padley, and we will instantly see these other date information for that person. So that is uh, what this data types feature can do for you, uh, and uh, it is quite interesting and and useful. And what Microsoft has done is this is the basic data type, right? Wherein you have your data and you're turning that into data data type. The next level feature is called organizational data types. So I'm not going to demonstrate that, but that is the next level feature. I'll tell you what that is though. 
let's say you work in a large organization where you and six other colleagues all work on the same customer data set every day. OK, so you all share the customer data set and this data set is not even maintained in Excel. It is coming in from uh, your online CRM system. So what your organization can then do is they can create a customer data set and then share that with all of you as a data type. So then it will appear here as one of the buttons like customers. And for a purpose of some analysis, you are looking at these three customers. So you type their names like name one, uh, name two, um, name three. And then you just select all of these, click on the customer button here in the data types. And now what Excel will do is Excel will say, oh, wait a sec, these are not text values. These are actual customer names. I'm going to match them up against your organizational data and fetch the relevant record. So then these will become customer data types. And from here on, I can use the dot operator to get additional details about them. So you can see these three customers. Your colleague can see seven customers. They are dealing with like that. The best but the reason why this is more useful is this way you don't have to duplicate any data. You don't have to maintain the data because when you copy data into Excel for analysis, uh, if things change in the back end and you forgot to update or whatever, that will create a lot of unnecessary problems. You could use tools like Power Query to connect, but it is still a hassle, right? The data has to come into Excel, whereas with this approach, you nobody is maintaining the data. The data sits in the central repository and it is used to generate the organizational data type. So that is a newer feature that they have added. Uh, but even if you don't use that, I think this in itself is very, very useful and interesting for you to take on and apply into some of your scenarios. So that's pretty much what I have for you. I will email this file to Michael so he can share it with the people who are attending, um, but feel free to ask some questions or go and do a bit of research on how this can be useful for you. OK, I, I guess no questions. So maybe we uh, yeah, so, yes, so. can go. So edit you taking over from me from this one. So yeah. And if you have any questions, you can always drop in the chat box so that we will be monitoring and then when uh, Chandu does another break for questions, it will be easier to just uh, pass your questions to him. OK, so Chandu, I think we are good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, that is that is nice to hear. And uh, yeah, I don't really have anything else to cover because this is just to showcase the data types feature and introduce that. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I um, maybe I'll cook up some questions for you because uh, <laughs> Actually, I I kind of tried this, but I tried it from a very different angle from what you did. So I used the the one which is similar to the one you yeah. exp explained about the company's right. one uh, organization data type. You know, the one. So what I did was I went on Power BI, I created, I, I took one of the data set I had, I made it satisfied, mm. and then whenever I log in with the same account on on Excel. Suddenly, I noticed that popped up that as part of the data set, data type showing in this data type part. And so I did it for companies. So when I type a company's name, I just go and pick it and it does what you've done. But, uh, you know, I've not tried it this way before. So I want to ask, uh, uh, I noticed many of the people in the audience, maybe that's why they're a bit slow to ask asking questions. Uh, they're kind of digesting it. Okay, where am I going to use these? Uh, so I want to ask you off, off, off the top of your head, where do you think uh, one can easily deploy these for maybe I'm a staff in a company or I'm a consultant and you know how I can easily uh, say, okay, these are areas that I should think of using these hats. And so while I let you uh, answer the question, let me also just pop, call on some people that I'm expecting to hear from them. So Charles, Victor, Ahmed, uh, those are the power guys in our 
in our community. So I know they will definitely have things to say to ask questions. And all, and uh, no and any names I've skipped. Uh, apologies, but please, we want to hear from you too. So yeah, what do you think are uh, scenarios you've had clients, or that you think it would be natural to just propose these for a client, you know, that have the version already? Yeah. Um. So as it stands, just the data type feature. We not even the custom data type that we created has a lot of potential because it will let you take some of the external data and combine it with your own information. So a good example is let's say you get some sales information from three countries every day as a as a log and you need to take all of that and make some sort of a concise view of how much business has happened overnight. Um, now, because it is coming from three countries, each will have their own currency number. So you might have like Indian rupees, New Zealand dollars and Nigeria currency and whatever. And when that information comes to Excel, you might be using some sort of a ma manual method to convert the exchange rate. But because there is a currencies data type, we don't have to think about that. We can just put the currency code and Excel will tell you on live basis what is the exchange rate as of that point in time. So um, it will, of course, fluctuate a bit, but uh, it, no, it, it is way better than you having to go online and search and copy paste or pay for an API or something like that. So that is where some of the built in data types can provide you data feed which you can then use it directly in conjunction with your numbers. So for example, here I got my REM. Let's say this REM is in, in the dollars uh, and I just want to get it in, I don't know, um, REM or salary in, let's just say euros. Okay, so salary. Um, and then we will we got the salary, but we do need the exchange rate. So we will get the exchange rate somewhere here. Uh, exchange rate and. We just need to figure out what logic to use. So for example, Euro. And click on this currency button. Oh, so it is expecting USD slash EUR as as the currency string. So now I've set up a currency that kind of converts USD to EUR and then I can get my latest price. You can even kind of get like previous close or something. So this will give you one USD is 0.82 euro as, as a value and now I have this information. I can then plug this into my analysis here. I can simply say this times that. And. We'll just make that an absolute reference. And we will convert their current salaries into euro. So this is one scenario where you have some data. You're not even using your own data types. You just have any data. You can take that and combine that with stock data, currencies, geography, or um, you know some of these other things. They have uh, some very interesting things here, uh, and they plan to add more. So some of them may not be directly business applicable right away. Like you got your animals, you have your plants, space structures data. You don't really know whether they will be applicable right now, but the source is there, so Excel is being used all over the world. So uh, for certain people that might be useful. So that is number one. Now coming specifically to our own data types and then organizational data. I find that these features will. No, although they are not immediately like adding an extra value on top because you could do some of these things without even having a data type in place. We can write six more lookups instead of one lookup. And get what we want, but just because this is there, so more and more people will start using and then they will become 
a preferred way of dealing with data where you have 16 columns or 20 columns and you don't need to show all of them. You just shrink everything into one column so that column itself contains the data and it will keep the work workbook like at least look concise. The data has to be there, so the size of the file may not change, but it is just that it will add an extra layer of uh, visual compression and things could look better. So that is the starting point. There might be other situations where this will become more and more handy. One classic example is not everything can be in multiple columns because certain things will have a hierarchy into them. Right now Excel probably doesn't support this, but it will it could be a future thing. By that what I mean is um, you have your uh, organization as, as, a, as a data type and then within that you got your departments. Each department itself is a data type and then department has teams. So team has a data type and teams themselves have employees. So employees a data type. So if, when you have a structure like that, you can't represent that kind of data in tables because it's kind of like a tree. There are links between them. Uh, so this is when a data type will be very good because it will let you have that sort of a hierarchy. Now I'm not really sure whether the custom data type feature allows that, but the this data type feature already allows that. You got seen, you have seen this here, where we said dot capital, and the capital itself is a city, so it came in as a city data type. Nigeria as a country data type. So now uh, that sort of a hierarchy where one is containing another, and then this third one contains something else is is all encapsulated by this. And you can use that to either maintain the data or or analyze the data. So, for example, I can see um, something like proportion of uh, capital population in the country. So, this would be take Abuja population uh, and then divide it with that population to see what percentage of population lives in the capital city so you'll get some valuable information sometimes i won't trust the values here it is saying new delhi has about zero percent of india population um, and this could be simply because the source where it is going uh, maybe the you don't have the reliable data because it's coming from external sources, right? It's not really like you're feeding in. So uh, you have to take a little bit of check to see is, is Excel telling me the truth here or, or not. But when you use these ideas with your own data, you don't have to do that check because you have fed the data. So you know whatever is there is the correct one. But yeah, so you could do things like this. Uh, to do something like this with a stable data without using data types means you will have to uh, maintain multiple sets of data, link them up and, and do a lot of other things. Whereas here it is all very, very natural for us to think in this, these terms. So yeah, I hope that kind of gives you a little bit more on where this will fit in. Um, but it is also a new feature. So just like everything else with technology, sometimes there are new features which will. Which will be there and then people will start finding ways to use them. Uh, so if I, I feel data types is one of such classic examples wherein it will. Um, people will will figure out innovative fun ways to work with them in their situations because now that they're available. Okay, that was very nice. But there's also one more question. Yes, please. Yeah, the question someone was asking about is there any limitation currently for what is future? Right? Is there any limitation? Um so there are some limitations uh, currently. So I'll show you one one interesting thing. This is uh, if, we, if you have like the built in data types, we call these as built in data types because they come packaged with Excel. So you got your capitals, countries, currencies and geographies and whatnot. 
the built-in data types also have some additional things that come in. We don't realize that they're available, but I'll show you. So I can kind of get a, an image of Nigeria. I mean, what is an image of Nigeria? We don't know. It's like it's a big country. There's lots of images that you can take. But I suppose when you go and Google Nigeria, whatever like shows up as the headline image of the is the country that that could be um, not. I didn't mean to say uh, Nigeria. I thought we'll talk about capital city, but we'll say uh, we'll get the flag image of Nigeria. And this will be. Generating the flag. And, and shows us in the cell as an image. Now this is actual image that is coming in live from the web, but it kind of comes and sits into Excel. So this is a very interesting thing in itself, right? You don't we, we were talking about limitations, but uh, you know somehow uh, we, we come across this, which in itself is very useful. OK, um, and and it is attached to the cell, so you make the cells bigger accordingly. It will size up and size down and whatnot. This is the built in data type. The custom data types that you create, they are not able to at least currently we are not able to do similar things, so we can't uh, yet technically have like employee images or uh, department logos or company logos attached to the data and, and then fetch them as image yet. So I would say that is one of the limitations, but it also means there is a potential down the line, maybe six months, one year, three years, you never know to have like get somebody Kane Padley and then immediately see their profile picture appear in the cell, which will simplify a lot of things that we tend to do with picture links and other other types of things. And it will also improve the way the reporting or data analysis or presentation is done. So that is one. The other thing that I feel as a limitation is um, is the nesting of things. So you got your country that contains the city. Uh, but I'm not really sure whether we are able to do that with the data types like I. I create two data types like male employees and female employees so gender and then put all the male here female there that kind of nesting. I'm not really sure whether we are able to do that. I have not tried that uh, since it came out, but I believe that is something that is kind of like a difference between built in and. Uh, and the uh, data and we again you can if you have anybody has tried uh, you can tell me if that works. Um, the other thing is irrespective of how you structure it, whether you have the data, all the columns or you put everything into one data type, you're not technically removing the data. All the data is always there. It is just restructured and remapped to fit into one column. So that is. Uh, it's not a way to reduce the file size or anything. It is just it will be um, just readjusted. So uh, you need to think about that. So if you got like a million records, data type is probably not the way in which we will go and reduce the size. And the the uh, yeah, th those are some of the immediate things that come to my mind. Uh, yeah. That's pretty much it, I guess. Yeah, thank you for this session. Thank you for accepting mm. our um, So, this research of a little picture from Gracie asked our presenters a few questions. So, we would like to know if there was any unique in Yang journey to the company. Sorry, I missed the last part. What was that? Yeah, like what, like what advice would you give to people that are starting to make you? Um, did you say what advice or? Or oh, what? Okay, what advice? What thoughts? Oh, we um, starting out in a field. Yeah, if you want to learn more about data types, just uh, um, go to the yeah, Microsoft. Oh, sorry. Yeah, not really data type, more of uh, mm. going not enter data analysis. Um, data analysis and other things. Yeah, there's plenty of places online where you can get very good information on on data analysis and using data within Excel. Um, yeah, I would start by just searching up the problems, but if you are looking for some specific places, you can always go to 
I guess you can go to my website or YouTube channel. The, those are two places which uh, where you can learn more from me. Uh, but you don't have to do that. You can do uh, online anywhere. So um, my favorite ways of learning data analysis with Excel is I would normally just uh, pick up new things from watching a YouTube video. So yeah, subscribe to maybe one or two good interesting YouTube channels and, and just follow the links from there. Uh, learn what is coming up new, especially if you have 365. I think it is a uh, it is valuable to see what is happening because every few months it is changing. So you want to capitalize on all these new and interesting features that are available to you. Uh, and yeah, YouTube is a good way to get that. Microsoft itself has an official channel where they share some information. Um, but uh, you know, there's plenty of YouTubers like uh, I, I have a YouTube channel, but uh, Laila Garani has a YouTube channel. So all of these places are very, very good places for you to pick up some useful information. And I, I can see that oh, Michael has you. already put links to my site in the chat window, so that's another place as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, so um, there's a few names people that always ask for. Uh, so a few people that always have some questions. Where's Neva or Tunde or Ahmed or Victor? People do you have any questions? Or Sorry, I'm um, not able to say anything because my boss Victor is here. So thanks very much, Chando, for this wonderful presentation. And even myself, I'm waiting to hear from Victor right now. I need to hear from Victor. Without hearing from Victor, we yes, may not be able to close this session. Thank you. Oh, Victor, do you have anything? Uh, okay. Hi, Chandu. Good uh, Hi. Good morning to you. Um, I know they just want to put me on the spot. I really don't have anything to say aside, <laughs> aside the fact that you know you've um, you've done an excellent job and I mean, just to deviate a little, your site has been, um, you know, very helpful. In, um, I mean, yeah, back maybe in the 2009, 2010s, I used to spend a lot of time on, you know, on, on the on the forums there with, uh, I know Ian Hudson, Luke M, Narayank, yeah, those three names were always, uh, they were always solving all the problems. And, uh, I mean, you 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 don't know, but just your little space there, you actually, you know, touched a lot of lives as regards Excel. So, um, I mean, what you've shown today is really interesting. I haven't seen, I mean, that feature on on the uh, on the Power Query side, but I mean, I have mm -hmm. used data types, of course, you know, uh, in Excel, you know, but but I never and, and I never even knew that button existed, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> I only saw it where you where you did mention it. So, I really don't have any question as regards the presentation. I think I was just trying to practice what you were saying on the side while you were talking and. Uh, I saw that it actually worked, so I would only say thank you very much for your time. So I think the others can have the floor now if they choose to. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. It is a, always fun to hear from people like you who have participated heavily in the forum and on the site. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for being there and telling me uh, about your experience. Oh, okay. Um, I was asking of his unique journey in data analysis field, like in his journey in data analysis in the Microsoft community. What was this mean? Like so if you can give us a tell us a bit about it. I only picked up few words, but were you asking about my journey in the data analysis? Is is that the question? Yes, was also your journey in data analysis. Yeah. Um it's, it's been a while now, but I I started working as a data analyst in 2006, 7. Um, it's not even data analyst, it's a business analyst. So um, data analysis is, is kind of like a part of my job, but I also have to think about other aspects of the business. And Excel obviously is, is the number one application that everybody uses for this. So when I started my job, I had no idea what Excel could do. I mean, I do know what Excel is and have used it a little briefly for various things, but I didn't really know the whole breadth of possibilities that it can do. So once I started using Excel a lot, I thought this would be a very good 
thing to explain and and share with others on on my personal website. So that is how because I had chendu.org as my personal website few years before that uh, and I was only talking about my life there. So I figured I might just as well start writing about Excel in that and that is how my journey really began and uh, I kind of enjoy that now more than working with data because I, I like the aspect of sharing things and uh, showcasing things and and learning and, and explaining so that others can do beautiful things with their data. And uh, yeah, if you are looking for like you're starting as a data analyst or you're working as a data analyst, pro, data analysis professional, um, the the things that I I feel like really important are don't focus on 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 just learning like where is everything in Excel or what formulas are there that that is like learning the technical side of thing while that is important try to focus it on a full picture so you want to learn for your business for your situation what is it that is happening and where the analysis will fit in where the data will fit in what sorts of outputs will fit in so you need to develop the whole whole spectrum of knowledge don't just focus on 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 the nuances of which formula and that thing that will well that is useful it is not the only thing a data analyst needs so you need to understand your business your line of work you need to understand what sort of people you are working with and how they perceive and read information so that you can prepare better reports better analysis that will feed into their level uh, and and work work like that so for example let's say you are working in an industry where you deal with lots of data and you make reports which are read by scientists now because they tend to have more analytical capability you need to prepare things that kind of directly go at that their level so um, you know some advanced graphs and all of that would be fairly fine because they can read that. Whereas if you are preparing things for a chief executive and she is really busy, doesn't have time, and just needs to understand at a glance what is happening, things are good or bad, and if bad, why? Then you are looking at preparing analysis and information at a different level. So that sort of context and gut feel is something that you want to actively develop, and and then use that to polish your Excel skills. So figure out which parts of Excel will work and just use that. It doesn't even have to be Excel. It could be tools like Tableau or Power BI or Python or whatever else you're doing. Uh, everything else is just done for an outcome. So figure out what that outcome is, who the audience are and, and go through that. Yeah, that that's but I, I think uh, kind of taken your question and turned it into more of a uh, my yeah. journey combined with where how people can in succeed in that path. Great. Um, thank you, Wasigay, for this amazing discussion. Okay. Uh, thank you for okay. getting another question. Uh, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, yes, my name is Charles Utoile. Um, not really a question, but uh, appreciations to Chando. Uh, I, I think this is a dream come true for me. I always wanted Chando and Nigeria on something, and uh, today has made that possible. Um, I, I also want to use this opportunity to th thank you very much, Chando, because uh, all through the years, uh, I think since 2005, when I got to know you, you have been an anchor in my Excel life. And so I appreciate that very well. What you've done today is very interesting. I'm seeing ways I can use it in finance, in finance related data, and I will explore them and see how to learn more of them. I want to believe that you have more of this on your site and uh, yes. I will get into it and get to know more of it. Thank you very much. That is awesome to hear Charles. Thank you so much. That is really lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for so. Thank you for everything. Thank you for. Well, so if you maybe support us, ask any of you also be available again for maybe another session at the time in the future. Or yeah, uh, that is definitely sure. I I 
I'll reach out to you and we can plan something maybe a few months down the line. And um, yeah, I would love to talk to you, you as a group and share a few more things.